enforcement before joining the assembly in 2014. Assembly member Jim Cooper was a captain in the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department. He's now running for Sacramento County Sheriff. Assembly member Cooper, thanks for being with us. Want to make sure we spend as much time with you as possible because you are a member of the legislature. You can pass laws. So I want to start with a quote that you gave our colleague Marina Shaddix after the shooting happened. You said Prop 20 would have prevented his early release and most likely would have saved lives that night. So you were talking about Smiley Martin involved in the shooting, not officially charged in terms of shooting anyone specifically, but was a product of early release here in California. Prop 20 was denied by voters back in 2020 to just give people some background. Uh, it would have increased penalties for properties, crimes, and repeat offenders, make it difficult for some convicted felons to qualify for early release. So as a member of the legislature, what's, what's going on? What's wrong here? Well, it's, it's frustration, and Prop 20 was a good one. And it really started with Prop 57 that the voters voted for, mm -hmm. and that allowed nonviolent inmates to be paroled early. And in California, what's considered a nonviolent crime is drive-by shooting, raping and drugging a woman, raping someone developmentally disabled, uh, arson, hate crimes. So things like that, that in, in the public's mind, those are violent crimes. So why are you getting out of prison or jail early for that? And that's the, frustra the frustration part that we see from uh, people. You know, I, you, you bring up Prop 57 and the voters passing that. It was dubbed the Safe Schools and Communities Act. Prop, Do I? Prop 47. Prop 47. Yes, Safe Schools and Communities. So let's say a voter goes into the booth. They see that. They go, yep, I want that. Check yes on that. I want safer schools and safer communities, but not maybe knowing all of the language. Do you think that's something that needs to be brought back for the voters or changed in the legislature? Well, it really should, and the voters got duped on that. It's the clear language that specifies what that bill does. Mm -hmm. And right now it's ambiguous the way it's written. So it doesn't really give voters a fair perspective of what's going on with that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this up a little bit. I'm gonna quit, play a sound bite for you. It's just about 15 seconds long, but I'm gonna set it up a little bit for you. Uh, our, one of our reporters, Dennis Shanahan, did a story yesterday. Uh, the, the guy was teaching him how uh, gang members go about creating, uh, making a handgun into a semi-automatic weapon. And he said something at the very end of that interview that I think was really interesting and I want to get your take on it. But part, a little part of the setup too is that this guy that you're going to hear from, he's a guy that trains deputies and police officers on how to use their weapons. So just to give you a background, he's got an extensive background uh, with all kinds of guns including this. So uh, guys, if we can play it for uh, Assemblyman Cooper, please. We had the law in effect in California. You are not allowed to put an auto sear in your weapon. You are not allowed to own a weapon as a felon. You are not allowed to do these things, yet that individual that did that, committed those acts, was a felon, was not allowed to own a gun. It was a stolen firearm. He converted the weapon illegally. Everything the man did was illegal. So adding more laws would have just been more laws he broke. And really it's that last part, adding more laws would just be more laws that he broke. And just to add a little context to this as well, at the end of that interview, he told Dennis, he goes, I bet you're going to cut that part of the interview. I bet you're going to cut that part of the interview because it doesn't stick with the popular narrative. So that's just a little bit of a background. So your, your response in terms of that sort of that last sentence that he said, uh, creating more laws just is going to be more laws broken. D th does that fit into th the way that you're thinking about this and, and a positive way to move forward? Absolutely. We've seen a lot of folks and politicians talk about more stricter gun laws. It's not going to work. We have the strictest gun laws in California. We still have problems. Chicago has very strict gun laws. They still have problems with murders. It can't change. You have to hold the folks accountable that are committing these crimes, felons. In this era right now of California and lawlessness, these folks feel that they're basically there's zero accountability. Do right. what you want. They don't care because they don't want to enact stricter laws that punish folks for carrying firearms illegally. Not legal gun owners. Mm -hmm. The problem's not with them. It's folks that aren't allowed to carry guns. Probationers, parolees. Right. Bad guys. And, and I think that that's part of the reason. Nikki and I have talked a lot about this over the last couple of days. You know, all of a sudden, every time this happens, if I have to say it one more time and say, oh, the, another mass shooting, this brings up, this brings to the to the forefront gun control again. And then we go into this narrative, right? And it's been said so many mm -hmm. times that now it's just like white noise. People don't even want to hear about it anymore. And in fact, I think it irritates people when they start to hear it because they're not seeing any tangible change uh, within that realm. Well, and the shootings are white noise too. There's been so many shootings, the public has been become desensitized to it. They're just the normal these shootings but it can't be that way it shouldn't be that way right. we should enforce the laws and the laws we, we quad back the laws yeah. felony murder if you go in and rob a bank that's highly dangerous mm -hmm. okay someone can get injured they pass the felony murder rule if someone dies in that incident a bank robbery only the shooter gets charged with murder everyone else just robbery hmm. 
they've clawed back gang enhancements, firearm enhancements, and it's, it's just frustrating. It shouldn't be that way. Hold people accountable. And it's, it's just, you see the, the, the frustration, my colleagues, the public, they're tired of it, they want to change. And I think we're here at a watershed moment. I, I was just going to ask you, what's happening in that building that's a few miles from here right now? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about the list of, you gave me this piece of paper, we were in our 40-second commercial break, drive-by shooting, drugging and raping woman, human trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, child abuse, elder abuse, arson. I mean, these are just a few, you said the list of some of the nonviolent crimes Prop 57 takes advantage of. So. I mean, what's what's going on with your colleagues? Why why what, what's why is it so difficult to be in the middle? It's either we want, you know, strict strict laws or defund the police. I mean, that seems to be the two narratives. I think one of your early speakers said it best. It's really polarized opposites. It can't be that way. It has to be in the middle to really deal with that and solve those problems. And it's so important. Like I said, this is saving lives, and we've got to change that. And it's been that way for the eight years I've been there. It's always a battle, always a fight, because there's individuals that don't want to create any new laws that puts anybody in jail or prison. This is about being accountable mm -hmm. for hate crimes. We've seen it in our API community, up 300%. That is not a violent crime. So we're saying if you commit a violent crime, the only change in the law is, hey, you know what? You don't get to get released early from prison. Mm -hmm. So if you go to prison for something bad like that, you know what? You should do your time. Two things can be true at the same mm. time. That's the that's sort of been the fabric of the conversation. Yeah. You can want criminal justice reform, but you could also want criminals to be held accountable. They can both be true at the same time. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Correct. And a lot of it's starting at the, at the early level, getting those young kids, as your previous speaker said, and having those programs. I mean, we've done a lot for the areas of Sacramento and built it up. But in those impoverished areas, South Sacramento, Del Paso Heights, North Highlands, we've done absolutely nothing to lift those areas up. And, and it's crazy. And that's where your problems are. Get them early. It's a lot cheaper than dealing with grown men who are out there in gangs and killing each other. Assemblymember Jim Cooper, Thanks unfortunately so we have to leave it there. Thank you so yeah, much yeah. for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. We'll be right back.